Hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I get to spend a little time with uh, with their families. Uh, it's obviously very important, and I know you guys travel and are as busy as uh, sometimes us coaches. So hope you get to enjoy the day. But uh, obviously, coming off of uh, <clears throat> last night's game, uh, we saw marked improvement. Um, I think the one thing that uh, um, you know, I, I keep reiterating, I talked about last night, is how proud I am of the locker room. They're, they're trying really hard to be a really good team. And, and uh, uh, nothing's, uh, nothing's come easy to this point. Uh, obviously, a lot of inter- injuries and Kofi's suspension. But, uh, um, you know, we're guarding. We're, we're playing well enough on that end. Um, you know, we out-rebound another Power 5 team, 16 or 18, whatever it was yesterday. Uh, obviously, some areas that we've got to clean up are the turnovers. Uh, and then, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was I was disappointed. I don't think we're in great great shape yet. Uh, obviously, uh, Kofi I think was nine of ten at the free throw line and, and struggled a little bit down the stretch. Uh, you know, Hutch missed one, Demonte missed one. Uh, we've got to get um, we got to get back into to, to late game shape so where we can <clears throat> be really focused. But I thought we showed great toughness, great grit, and. Uh, Nothing, um, you know, nothing, nothing of, of significance yet on Trent. Uh, you know, he's still in a, uh, you know, walking around with, with the use of crutches. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see as that goes uh, and and moves moves forward. But um, I will say this: we don't we know it's not an ACL. So um, we'll uh, we'll continue to monitor that um, and. Uh, You'll get ready for UT Rio Grande, who's coached by a dear friend, uh, Matt Figger. Uh, Fig and I worked together for a long time. Uh, many of you guys may remember he was at Austin P uh, when they came in here my first year uh, and uh, really a, <clears throat> gave us a great game, heck of a game. He did a great job there and is in year one down there. So it's a team that's uh, playing extremely well. They've got a couple of very gifted scores. Uh, they know how to um, they know how to compete. They're playing extremely well uh, on the defensive side. Uh, so I'm uh, you know they're picked at the top of the whack or close to it. They're going to be a team that's going to be rec- uh, uh, a team to be reckoned with in their league, and we're going to have to play very 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 well. Hey Brad, um, with Trent potentially out for a couple games at least, what, what does that mean for Alfonso, Austin, and just the rest of the team? Yeah, next man up, you know, and, and I, I mean, you don't replace Trent. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that, um, again, plays, plays the point, plays off of it. But, uh, you know, in, in, in a conversation with, with Bruce after the game last night, you know, it's just talking about how disruptive he is on the defensive end. And, you know, he's a guy that doesn't let uh, a night where he didn't, didn't play very well offensively affect what he does defensively and uh, <clears throat> you know he just you know Trent's the one guy who doesn't make scouting report mistakes he doesn't make uh, you know he might go you know three or four or five games without making one so uh, there's a mental component to not having him if he's not if he's out uh, but uh, you know Plummer and and uh, and Hutch and and you know we'll see Brandon uh, Pajemski all those guys are going to have to step in and 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 uh, and fill that role. Those are big shoes to fill. And then last night you said Andre's dealing with like head trauma from the concussion. Can you clarify what he's going through right now and just medically, like how you guys are dealing with him? Yeah, it's not that. It's not that we've that we've we've ruled that out. And and uh, uh, I'm not going to get into anybody's medical stuff, but we did rule that that piece out. So uh, yeah, it's uh, you know it's something he's frustrated with, and we'll just keep monitoring and see how uh, how it keeps moving from here. But uh, he was terrific uh, in the 18, 19 minutes he he played, and um, you know was 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 terrific. And you know he's leading the country in assist ratio. And uh, again, that was uh, another positive sign last night uh, was was his play. Thanks, Brad. Hey Brad, just I mean, you've talked about just sort of the unsettled nature of things at the beginning of the year. Have you had a season that started like this, where you maybe haven't had that that group you thought you would uh, in the first couple weeks? No, 
No, not to this extent, not to this magnitude. You know, not where it's, you know, we've had we've had situations where we were out a guy, uh, but not, uh, you know, not three or four or five. You know, and and uh, you know, Luke Luke had uh, been practicing great, and and you know, just unbelievable back spasms where he couldn't even get through. You know, he felt good, and as soon as he got to warm up, his back would lock up. So. Um, you know, he was back in practice today, um, in, in much in a much better place. But not where we've just had this this um, this number and this amount of guys for various reasons. And and uh, you know, it's, it it has caused us to be a little unsettled. <clears throat> I guess when you're going through a situation like that at the beginning of the year, is that is it more difficult than say if these injuries hit like in January or February, just just because you get off to maybe, uh, you know, not the start that you might have expected. Well, I think the thing it does it gives us time. Uh, you know, when you, when you start dealing with stuff in in conference play, things can spiral pretty quickly. Uh, this one this one gives us some time to work through it. Uh, gives guys an opportunity potentially to recover and come back. Um, uh, and and then find find some chemistry. You know, chemistry is. And, and um, uh, that connectivity is, is something that can be gathered pretty quick. Uh, I thought we gained on that last night. But uh, again, it was last night I felt was the first night where I could coach, you know, and put guys in positions to score baskets and put Plummer in situations to continue to get him shots, um, you know, to, 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 to run actions to get Kofi the ball, you know, and, and um, so it was nice to, to to finally be able to and feel like I was impacting the game from coaching and not just trying to uh, have a mosh pit of just trying to get through it, you know. <clears throat> Thank you. Coach, I wanted to ask about Andre and, you know, I guess for lack of a better, like the struggle he faces, you know, Trent's out, more is needed of him. He has to figure out when to hit the gas and when to hit the brakes. And, you know, there's a mental component to all this, a physical component. You know, he's under a lot right now. What, you know, what's it like? How, how do you help a kid like that? How, do you, how can you coach, you know, in those circumstances for him? Yeah, and I mean, he was terrific today, Robert. I mean, he felt really good and he was extremely, um, you know, e extremely involved. And, and um, yeah, I mean, it's something that, uh, you know, I feel great about, about Bello um and is and, and where he's at and how he's handling things i, I think it's 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 frust just as frustrating for him um to to uh not feel right or i guess that's the right word i you get the best way to put it uh but uh uh he wants to be out there and it, it was you know we'll we'll find out what what's causing all that and but uh you know he was terrific today and and uh, you know we'll hope those days continue have you had conversations with him about, you know, every day, like, you know, it's, it's a huge burden for a kid to carry of, you know, yeah. how, how to, how to go through that. And, you know, it's a, it's a lot he's going through. So he's in a really good place. I felt really good after today. I felt really good after the game last night. Cause you know, it was, even though he wasn't an active participant in the game for most of the second half, um, he was still very involved in the bench and he was a great teammate and he was, you know, helping Hutch and and, uh, and and then our conversations today was terrific and and and, uh, and our workout was terrific. So uh, we'll hope we we're, we're we're gaining ground on it. Thanks. <clears throat> hey, coach, what's been your message to a locker room that's not playing their best basketball early? I know in previous years you had that and then it clicked into place. I know different circumstances with the injuries and everything, but is there anything you could take from those past experiences and try to try to use and, and try to give them a peace of mind? Yeah, my teams usually don't play very well early. For what I mean, you look and I and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, you know, I, I think we try to, you know, might be on me. I, you know, I, I mean, I, I think that you know, injuries are obviously a piece of the circumstance this year, but, you know, we, we're trying to figure things out. We're try trying to get it right. And, you know, I, I do that choosing to play a really hard schedule and challenging games. And, 
and and but I still think it's how you learn who you are. Uh, I think this team is is trying so hard. I mean, I was really proud of them because I didn't. I, I'll be honest, I didn't know. That, you know, we we're at a tipping point. We I didn't know where our fight was, and you know, I felt great when Kofi's waving to the crowd and getting them going, and and uh, you know, it was the it was such a positive vibe, and uh, this group is trying, and and. Uh, then to get get guys jumping up, making shots when you know you made two in the previous game, and uh, those are the little the little things I take away. And then I know that you know, hey, it, it's it's a long season. You know, we've got we've got a long way to go. We've got a lot of league games left, um, and and we're inching up on it. And you know, if we keep playing defense, we're second in the country in DER. Uh, we're sixth in rebounding. We keep doing those things. We're going to give ourselves a chance till it all kind of clicks and falls together, and 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 and, and um, it'll do that. It'll do that. Thanks, <clears throat> Brad. I guess my question is along those the lines of what you were just speaking about. When you do get it figure out, when it all does start clicking, does it need to uh, look like it did last year in terms of pace and scoring and, and all that? Because um, you know scoring is down, but I think we understand it's five games in and the injuries, and as you said, you're trying to figure things out. So is there a kind of a basketball goal you're trying to get to, to match what you're doing last year, or does it need, can it be different? No, it can be very much different. And I think I've, you know, I think the one thing that I've, I've tried to do throughout my career is adapt to, to whatever fits. And, uh, you know, we've got to get the, we've got to get the turnover bug figured out. We were, most of the turnovers are careless. Um, you know, I think we're 36th maybe in offensive efficiency. Uh, and you take away our turnovers and move us in a position where we were last year in turnovers, and we would be in the top five. And the turnovers and the missed free throws have been a problem. But we're, you know, we're clipping along at a 1.1 point per possession. And uh, I'll take 1.1 at any pace. And uh, you know we 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 knocked it we knocked the turnovers down, uh, you know in a 64 possession game like last night, uh, you cut those in half and and all of a sudden, you know that becomes pretty efficient basketball and so I'm um, I'm comfortable with it. However, it has to be. Would I like to be a little bit faster? Absolutely. Um, you know when you're short some bodies and some guards who make a lot of those things happen, um, you know it's not as easy and yet. Last night, our pace and our thrust broke that game open. So it's um, uh, we're going to continue to keep striving for it, and and uh, we get guys back, we'll be we'll be in the in the right place with it. And just following up on what you said earlier about um, <laughs> uh, legs late in the late game, were, were you talking physically or or sort of the mental both late game? Both. You know, you can be you can be when you're when you're tired. Um, you know, it gets harder to concentrate when you're breathing hard. It gets hard. I mean, you know, free throw shooting when you when you're breathing hard, your head moves. You know, you got to keep your eyes focused on the rim. Little things like that. You know, I mean, poor Austin Hutcherson. I mean, he played 20 minutes last night, and uh, you know, he hadn't been in practice 20 minutes. Uh, you know, and we're throwing him out there and saying, "Hey, make an open jump shot," and you know, the legs are a little rubbery, and 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 you're tired, and. Uh, that's not easy to do, and you know, in, in a few, in a, you know, next time out, next couple times out, you know, he'll make those shots and uh, he'll make those free throws. But uh, you know, we we've got to get, uh, you know, Kofi's been out a long time, and uh, he he's got off to a great start at the free throw line, and that was just conditioning. That was just simply being, you know, being being in in, in good enough shape to step up and make those, and and. He's, he's that guy this year. I want to be able to throw the ball to him against the press or throw the ball to him in a late possession offense and not worry about him getting fouled. Good stuff. Thank you. Hey, Coach. Obviously, through these last two games, you've had a couple different times or instances where you've gone two, three, four, five, even six minutes without a field goal. What do you think that is being caused by right now? Turnovers. It's hard to, it's hard to, make. I mean, we started the half with three turnovers in a row. Uh, and you can't score if you don't have the ball. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's uh, no matter what, you know, we threw four horrific post passes, just horrible, um, you know, and, and uh, 
you know, we can't do those things. You know, you got a player open, you got to you got to do that. You know, we, uh, we we played a little bit sped up. Um, we'll get that. Offense is a like a fine tuned piece of machinery, man. It's got to hum and it's got to be perfect. And then when it when one piece isn't synchronized and playing right, uh, it gets hard to score. And and again, uh, I didn't expect that last night. I didn't expect to to be a fine-tuned machine. We're, we're moving a lot of guys around, and obviously at the end we don't have, you know, Trent or Bello. So, um, you know, but I but I thought, you know, our offensive efficiency was pretty good for, for even considering the turnovers. We were 1.1, so I'll take that most every night. Yeah, and then I also kind of wanted to follow up with Hutch, and I doubt you're going to share his minutes restriction for obvious reasons, but – he seems to kind of show a lot of flashes, but then also kind of be fighting off some rust, or at least he did last night. Where do you think he's kind of at? I know you said in the next week or 10 days, he's going to be ripping the rim down, but what's the next step in him kind of developing here? Yeah, it's just comfort. I mean, I like he hasn't played in two plus years, you know, and uh, you don't just go out there and see a different colored uniform and you feel different adrenaline, you feel different excitement, you feel uh, you get tired quicker. You know, there's there's a, a different pressure on, um, and it's just kicking through that. He's got an unbelievable temperament and personality. He's been way better than I than I anticipated early. Way better. What he's trying to do is not easy, and he's knocking it out of the park um, with his with his his what he's bringing to us, and not just on offense. I mean, his defense has been. He made one scouting report mistake last night. He helped out of a corner on Nigel Pack, but um, man, he's he's been he's been tremendous. He's got a chance to be an elite defender, um, as well as a, a guy that's a great great threat on the offensive end. Thanks, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank thank you. Hi, right, Coach. Ed, expanding on what what you said about some early season struggles over the years, is there some self reflection there on how you approach the preseason? You know, do you need to scrimmage more, install more, anything like that? I don't know. I think our system, our demands are, you know, I think I, I do. I do that every year, Doug. I, I mean, I try to figure out, you know, how to become, how to become better. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I also know I like the end result winning a lot of games in February and March and, 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 and January and, I like finding out who we are. I mean, you, I, you know, I could play a bunch of home games and play the Joey Biggs Invitational and not go to a tournament, just get a bunch of bye games here and and uh, and win and feel good about ourselves. But I'd much rather get punched in the mouth, find out who we are, and uh, and be able to deal with it and 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 move forward in that fashion, than just take a cupcake city you know attitude and say hey we're going to win a bunch of games but man all of a sudden we get in league play or we're on the road and we don't we don't have any identity how to handle it the other thing i wanted to ask you about was that high school basketball kicked off you know the holiday holiday week have you got some reports on how your three kids in the 22 class have been playing yes yes yeah, yeah <laughs> can really, you share those with us really, they've been we've we've gotten off to a stellar start and um, no, it's been really good. And, and uh, um, you know, Ty had a big game the other night and couple, just a couple quarters, um, you know, they said he was electric offensively, uh, you know, and Jaden's been putting up uh, huge numbers. He, I mean, huge numbers against top quality competition. Uh, and then uh, we're just getting started with <coughs> <coughs> We're just getting getting started with the season. Excuse me, <clears throat> man. We're start just getting started with the season in Ohio, so we're right around the corner there. But uh, yeah, we're we're excited. This is a good group. This is a talented talented group. Man, thanks, coach. Excuse me, coach. I wanted to ask you about Hutch and the idea of just trying to not overload him, and and just the idea that you're. Can he, I mean I know you in the preseason you talked about him being on the ball if you needed if you needed that too but is there a is there a point where you're just trying to go uh, uh no no like I don't want your head spinning by the time Christmas rolls around here I don't want you overloading too much as you get back in this thing I, fire drilling him last night is one thing but you know it, it, do you have those thoughts 
Yeah, here's where I feel really good about. One, Hutch has been in a lot of practices that first year. And and so he's got a really good idea of what we're doing and, and what concepts we are. Secondly, he's really smart. Uh, and he, he, he knows every position, you know. And so I don't uh, – the execution may not be great, yet because of the timing that that that, that takes but uh, yeah I, I mean to say I don't want to overload him I don't uh, but it's like I told him a couple days ago you know I said you're gonna have to play a couple spots and that's just that's just the the reality of it and he's got the perfect temperament and and I don't feel like overloading him is is um, that big a deal where some guys I just I just can't do it can't do that with Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. Brad, I had just one question for you about you know, Matt Figger. Just, you know, he had a really good run at Austin P. I was just curious what you thought about him you know, leaving to take the, the Rio Grande Valley job. Yeah, you know, I think it's – I think there's a lot of reasons coaches make choices and decisions. And, uh, you know, I think the, the – I don't know the, the particulars of, of, of certain things. I know that uh, – uh, the athletic director down there is at Rio Grande is a guy that uh, uh, that I know. Um, I knew he was looking for a for a head coach. Uh, that and uh, uh, I think there was a connection there that was 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 very comforting for Matt. Um, but uh, <clears throat> you know the WAC's kind of an up and coming league um, with Grand Canyon and New Mexico State, two really good teams. They've added the Texas schools. Uh, but uh, he's a terrific basketball coach. I think he made a decision that he felt was best for his his career and future. And and uh, you know he's just going to keep on uh, uh, winning games and being a, a really good coach because that's what he is.